on my way to the crash site where the XB70 Valkyrie impacted the ground after having a mid-air collision. But before I get there, let me fill you in on the story. Watch this. On June 8, 1966, North American XB-70 Valkyrie lifted off from Edwards Air Force Base in Southern California. Right here. Along with it was an F-4 Phantom, a Northrop F-5, a T-38 Talon, and an F-104 Starfighter. They were going up for a public relations photo shoot at the request of General Electric, because General Electric manufactured the engines for each one of the aircraft. The plane the footage was being filmed from was a Learjet owned by Frank Sinatra. As you can see, to the left of the Valkyrie, first the T-38 Talon, then the F-4 Phantom off the Valkyrie's left wingtip. Just off the right wingtip is the F-104 Starfighter, and to the right of that is the F-5. The shoot lasted 40 minutes, and about one minute after they stopped filming, at 9.26 a.m., the F-104 came into contact with the Valkyrie's right wingtip. Its nose pitched up, then it rolled left over the top of the Valkyrie, shearing off both vertical stabilizers, hitting the top of the left wing, then bursting into flames. F-104 pilot Joe Walker was most likely killed instantly. He was considered an excellent pilot and had flown the F-104 eight other times next to the XB-70 Valkyrie. The F-104's horizontal stabilizer sits on top of its vertical stabilizer in a T formation. For some reason, the horizontal stabilizer made contact with the Valkyrie's lowered wingtip. The Valkyrie had adjustable wingtips. They could move from a flat and level position, like you see here in this depiction, to a lowered position of 25 degrees, or to a lowered position of 65 degrees. And as you can see in this photo, while they're flying in formation, shortly before the collision, the wingtips on the Valkyrie are in a lowered position of about 25 degrees. For some reason, Joe Walker drifted too close and made that fatal contact. It was never confirmed why it actually happened, but shortly before the collision, Edwards Air Force Base reported a Convair B-58 Hustler approaching at a higher and safe altitude. Several of the pilots in the formation responded by saying they could see its contrails. Joe Walker said nothing because he may have been trying to visually locate it when he made contact with the Valkyrie. Also, Chuck Yeager made a comment about Walker lacking experience in flying formation and that he may have forgot about his T-tail and the lowered tips of the Valkyrie and then made that fatal contact. The final report concluded that Walker was 70 feet to the right, or 21 meters, and 10 feet below the fuselage of the XB-70, which is 3 meters. He was unable to accurately perceive his motion relative to the Valkyrie, thus making contact. And with the Valkyrie having its wingtips lowered 25 degrees, which would make it another 10 to 13 feet lower on the tip, and the F-104 having the T-tail higher at the back, it's very possible Joe Walker was unaware of the lowered wingtips and made inadvertent contact. The F-104 burst into flames and broke up, then came crashing down to the desert below. The XB-70 Valkyrie flew stabilized for 16 more seconds before going into an unrecoverable flat spin and descent. Pilot Al White ejected and survived, but for unknown reasons, co-pilot Carl Cross did not eject and was killed when the plane impacted the ground. The Valkyrie impacted right here in this exact spot. And after the crash, this was the photo taken from Frank Sinatra's Learjet. So here it is. Here I am at the site where the XB-70 Valkyrie impacted the ground. There's a memorial here. You can see the American flag, a cross, and a couple other things over there I'll get closer to. Just to let you know that 
came from that direction 25,000 feet this way and ended up impacting, I think, on its belly with its nose pointing that way, basically pointing south. So you can see, it says, this is not a grave, but a man did die here. Please be respectful of this memorial and his memory. His name was Carl Cross. He was the pilot that was unable to get out of the XP-70. See, there's little mementos here. Some people put coins here. There's a bottle of whiskey, can of beer. Over here we have a the elite canine, an elite canine unit. A lot of bullets, unfired bullets. People come here to show their respect to Carl Cross. In areas where the rain has washed away the topsoil, you can see there's little rivets that still have the white paint on it that were part of the plain. Another one here. There's this screw. A screw head. So all the pieces that I found, I'm going to leave them right up here at the memorial. So the mid-air collision occurred back over there at 25,000 feet and the XB-70 ended up flying and pancaking in right here with the front of the plane over here and the back of the plane over there, right here in this spot, right next to the giant yucca tree that used to be standing here but now this is it here collapsed The F-104 impacted the ground in two main pieces 2.16 miles west-northwest of the Valkyrie. That's 3.5 kilometers away. As you can see in this semi-blurry photo, you can see the tail of the jet here and the front section of it pointing up in this direction. And one thing I noticed is it's kind of hard to see in this blurry photo, but there's a bush here, a bush here, and this row of bushes makes a somewhat of a semi-circle that you can see right here. And here on Google Earth you can still see those bushes making that semi-circle right here where the jet was laying. So there it is. Here's the bushes that make that semi-circle. That means that the fuselage landed with the tail or the back end here and up through there right behind right behind the cross and this memorial so from here the actual jet itself impacted 
right on this embankment and the photos that I've seen of it, you can't really see how steep it is, but being here, you can actually see how steep it is. So basically I'm standing right in the spot where the fuselage impacted the ground. And as expected, I don't know if this is, there's a piece of melted aluminum and another piece of debris here. There's a rivet right here. But this is the location where the fuselage hit. Cockpit with Joe Walker in it was up back over in there and we're gonna, I'm gonna walk up to that. One thing that I notice where the jet impacted and burned, there's, there's no plants there. But I also notice, especially right in here, the rocks that were underneath the jet while it was burning some of them are charred black, almost like charcoal. And that's not volcanic rock, that's rocks that were under extreme heat. You can see this rock was burned from the, from the jet fuel fire. So this photo right here was taken from about right here where I'm standing. And this photo right here was taken from about where I'm standing here, looking back that way. I was given coordinates to the F-104's fuselage and cockpit location. The fuselage location was correct, but the cockpit coordinates were not correct. The coordinates for the cockpit brought me to this location right here where the hand is. So I came to the location where they said that the cockpit uh, uh, impacted and trying to match it up to this photo here. You can see there's a memorial cross right here and then you can see the horizon and you can see what the terrain looks like. What you see here in the middle is kind of a row of Joshua trees right there. But when I stand on the actual spot and I look toward that horizon, nothing matches up, which tells me this is not the location. So you can see the horizon, but nothing else looks familiar. When I come over here, just above that ridge right here, this little ridge here, I can see a row of Joshua trees. So I think the Memorial Cross is somewhere over in this area. And I'm gonna go over there to see if I can find it. I'm gonna head down through this terrain in the direction that I think the Memorial actually is. Well, there's the Joshua trees that could be the ones in the photo, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look at this ridge right in here. And there it is. This is the location. This is the exact spot where the cockpit impacted the ground. It says crash, crash site, NASA test pilot, and then it's kind of faded, can't see much. There's some wings, Air Force wings. 
attached to it right there. There are, looks like small pieces of the airplane here. In fact, I think this rock right here has melted aluminum on it. This is a piece of melted aluminum from the cockpit. Another piece of the plane. Looks like a piece of the jet right here. At the back of his memorial cross. Somebody put this on there. And then if you come around to the front of it, there are actually pieces of the F-104 fighter jet that he was flying when he had the mid-air collision. So I was looking around to see if there's any debris around here. And there, of course there is some on the cross, but I saw this thing, which is a piece of melted aluminum. So this is definitely, definitely where the jet's cockpit impacted the ground. This is right on the spot. Also, all over the ground there's this gray stuff that almost looks like concrete and there are pieces of melted alum aluminum and plastic canopy and it's the same gray substance. It's right here on this rock. So I'm guessing something that was inside the jet melted and made this gray looking substance that almost resembles cement. And as you can see from here, I'm about halfway up the embankment where the impact occurred. So the correct location of the cockpit was actually right here. I decided to draw a line from the cockpit location to the location where the Valkyrie came to rest right here. After I drew the line from the F-104 cockpit to the XB-70, the heading was about 120 to 123 degrees. The date of the accident was Wednesday, June 8, 1966, and the sun rose at 5.41 a.m., and the midair occurred at 9.26 a.m. That means the sun was rising for 3 hours 45 minutes at the time of the collision. The sun rises 1 degree every 4 minutes, which is 15 degrees per hour. That would put the sun at 56.25 degrees above the horizon at the time of the accident, which means as the formation was on a heading of about 120 degrees, they were heading pretty much straight into the sun. Therefore, it is very possible that the sun may have contributed to the midair by negatively affecting Joe Walker's vision. We can never know for sure because the only person that would know is no longer here and that's Joe Walker. But judging from all the facts, I think it's very, very possible the sun may have contributed to the accident. So there you have it. The 1966 mid-air collision between the F-104 and the XB-70 Valkyrie explained right here on the Forrest Haggerty Channel.